Hello everyone. A mother became over anxious because her daughter couldn't find a man to marry. One day the daughter mentioned to her mother that a certain man had eyes for her. The mother asked, what religion is he? The daughter replied, I'm afraid he doesn't go to any church. The mother said, it would be difficult for you to be married to a man who doesn't go to church. Why don't you teach him about our faith? The daughter agreed and started teaching him about the Catholic faith. Finally, when it seemed they were becoming a serious item, the girl came home one day very downhearted and the worried mother asked her what had happened. She replied, I think I taught him too much. He now wants to become a priest. It seems from the first reading that the prime task of anyone called to the priestly ministry is the spreading of the gospel. St. Paul says, faith comes through hearing. So also do vocations. Jesus said, the sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. But is the voice of the good shepherd being drowned out with a host of worldly distractions? I am of the opinion it is. Many moons ago in Ireland, a religious vocation was considered to be a great blessing for the family. The saying went that if you had a pump in the yard and a priest in the family, you had it made. But everyone was much more compliant in those days, perhaps too much so. No one would dare contradict the clergy. But that in hindsight seemed a little bit unreal. At Antioch, for instance, in today's reading, the Jews contradicted everything that Paul and Barnabas had said. The gospel, you know, is not good news for everyone. That is true, especially today. The gospel which we teach today will be more often than not on quite, have quite a number of elements which are counter-cultural. The recent clash between the church and the state over the redefinition of marriage is a good example of this. Archbishop Nichols cautions ministers of the word about watering down the difficult parts of the gospel and church teaching for their own convenience. The gospel is not about preaching trivialities or take it or leave it kind of sermons, but imparting fundamental truths which pertain to our eternal destiny. Just like everyone else, we priests have a duty to apply the message to ourselves first before giving it out to others. And who among us hasn't failed in this matter at one time or another? All in all, I would say there's never been a better time to be a priest. Working in the vineyard of the Lord as a committed priest, a consecrated person, is very rewarding. A sad priest or religious is a contradiction in terms. And celibacy is not the cause of the vocation shortage. The cause is far more likely to do with the materialism and consumerism of our present day culture, which lead, leaves little room in our lives and in the lives of many for things spiritual. Vocation shortage, marriage shortage, children shortage, baptism shortage, they are all interconnected. But I feel things may have turned the corner. Green shoots are appearing. For anyone who answers the call to ministry, Jesus promises a hundredfold in this life and eternal happiness in the next. The call of the Good Shepherd does not disappoint. Now, thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.